Hello. Uh, okay, right. Can everybody hear me all right? Yeah. Um, I'm honored to be here. I want to be showing you um, the work that we've been doing at Icometrics. We're a Belgian company um, that works on, as the slide reads, precision medicine in neurology. Um, a bit of a topic that's been underlined maybe here at the conference, neurology, so I'm hoping to show you a bit what's, what's happening in the space. Maybe good already to create a bit of context, um, showing that the field of neurology um, in the last two decades, there's been an increase in um, the deaths associated with neurological di diseases of around 40%. And this accounts to um, an economic burden in the US that's estimated to be 800 billion which is more than the fields of oncology, heart disease, diabetes, and kidney disease together. Um, this is, of course, not very good news, but it also offers an opportunity that if we um, provide better care, if we treat patients better, that there's, um, as you see on the x-axis, that there's a potential economic impact of around, uh, of over one trillion dollar. Uh, of course, the field of diabetes, kidney disease, heart disease, and oncology, um, at least from our side, it seems like you have a lot of like, these objective and quantitative biomarkers which have unlocked the doors of precision medicine. But up until recently in, in neurology, that's, that has been one of the challenges. Um, if you take the example of brain scans, which for us still are the, yeah, the best approximation of the pathological processes that are going on in the brain, you see that these are often... Um, analyzed in a subjective and qualitative way. And this is something that we want to help uh, improve. And this is why we developed our unique uh, platform um, that consists of multiple tools aimed at improving the care for patients with neurological disorders. And central in that platform is our IcoBrain software. And this is an AI-driven application that analyzes uh, brain scan and quantifies like abnormalities, atrophy, um, all different biomarkers uh, from a brain scan. Um, now we want to make sure that the conclusions made from brain scan are objective and quantitative, but something we notice as well in the in clinical practice and a problem which is actually very, very important is the, the quality of scans. And that's something that we're also focusing on, helping hospitals, helping imaging networks, uh, make sure that they use the right protocols because there's less than 10% uh, of brain scans actually follow the current guidelines. This is a big, big problem. So we're trying to make sure that the conclusions made from brain scans are good, make sure that the data from the brain scans is good. But of course, there's a lot more to the patient care path. And that's why, we also developed a telemonitoring solution to sort of collect clinical data from patients throughout their whole uh, care path, throughout their daily lives. Um, this all forms our, our platform together with uh, the fact that we're working on a lot of predictive models to predict uh, outcomes. And together with, yeah, all of this platform is, is integrated within clinical care, is integrated within the hospital systems, integrated within EMRs. Um, so I could brain helps to make um, brain scans more objective and quantitative and together with iCompanion, our telemonitoring tool, and together with iCompass, our predictive models and our uh, decision support tool, these form the iCometrics precision medicine platform in neurology. And we're mostly focused on multiple sclerosis because this was uh, the first neurodegenerative disease which had multiple treatments uh, approved and by now there's, there are over 20 different DMT is approved, and uh, we see it as a bit of a precursor for other neurological disorders like Alzheimer's, where now there's more treatments coming to the market. Um, and I'll go into, um, focus on the example of multiple sclerosis, of course, although of course, our work in uh, dementia, but also epilepsy, TBI, stroke, Parkinson's is uh, very interesting to look into, but let's look at MS. Um, in MS, there's a lot of treatments, um, as I mentioned already, and we know that it's very important um, to start a patient off with an optimal treatment from the start. But this is challenging. As I mentioned, more than 20 treatments. Um, my mother was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 29 years ago when I was born. She had the choice between three different drugs, and back then, the choice was basically which one of these, the side effects of these drugs would you least, would you most want to avoid. My brother now got diagnosed five years ago also with multiple sclerosis and he had the choice between, back then it was like 18 or 19 different drugs. 
And you would think that we ha already have a better idea after those 25 years of research, millions being poured into it, that we have a better idea already for which drugs will work for which person, but we actually don't. It's still a hit and miss, a trial and error. In the case of my brother, for example, his first treatment wasn't working. And this sort of transitions to the next thing is that we need to be able to detect whether a treatment is working early on. It's really important, and this is why we um, yeah, really think these objective measures from brain scans, from clinical assessments, make sure that these clinical assessments are done in a correct way, because there's still a huge error rate of evaluating disability. A lot of like relapses in MS are um, very important. Half of them are missed. It's a big chance, and we believe that digital health technology can help. Um, this is um, an example of what our ICO brain, our brain imaging AI software does. And on top, you see um, lesions that we have, uh, that our algorithm has picked up within the brain. Then they're color coded uh, based on the location where they're found. And at the bottom, you see um, the same lesions, but they're color coded whether, um, based on whether they're new, whether they're enlarging or shrinking compared to the previous brain scan of this person. And um, we present these overlays to radiologists um, like this, which is color coded, but also in PDF reports where we um, give more data on the actual volumes of brain abnormalities in the different regions. On the second page, you see in the back, uh, we also quantify atrophy, so brain shrinking over time, compare it with normative population. Um, yeah. And what we also offer radiologist is a pre-populated template. So we just write a whole radiological uh, template a report based on the results of our algorithms. And they can just edit and see, yeah, edit if they want to. Our iCompanion app, this is our telemonitoring tool, um, which is also currently being used like by five, over 5,000 patients worldwide, uh, multiple hospitals, also here in the US. Um, and a big part of the app is built around patient reported outcomes from symptoms to uh, test for body function, subjective cognitive problems, and fatigue. Then we've got um, integration that allows us to assess, um, integration that allows us to link with Google Fit or Apple Health so we can get sleep and uh, steps data, for example. Then we've got some cognitive, a cognitive test battery, which we developed ourselves. There's medication reminders in there, and there's a visit preparation tool as well that we developed. And maybe it's good to pause there for a second already to sort of focus on the point that you can make all these solutions, you can, you can collect this data from the patients, and we can show it some nice plots to clinicians or make a portal that can show it. But it's really important to be embedded in the clinical workflow and to, first of all, present all these things so that they're in the EMR, get it as easy as possible for clinicians to use it, but also that you can, if you can prove some value and actually save time, that's a big factor that we noticed in the hospitals that we're working with. And here, for example, the visit preparation, that's a tool uh, where patients complete some questions before they come to a visit, uh, and it's asking questions like, do you need any new prescriptions, certificates? Um, what do you want to talk about next visit? So patient is reflecting already a bit, they're coming to the, to the consultation a bit more prepared, ask them uh, if anything important has changed in their personal, private life. Um, the idea is to save time during the intake conversation, and that's something that really, uh, that clinicians really appreciate, that it's not just a tool for collecting data, showing them some nice graphs, but actually that it's a clinical tool which is, makes their life easier, not only the lives of the patient, but also from the clinicians, from the neurologists and nurses. Uh, the final two, oh, sorry, final two uh, things are uh, educational content that is in the app uh, developed for people with MS to learn about what their MRI scans mean. And this is a nice feature together with the fact that they can view their actual MR scans from their phone as well. And it can really, um, help stimulate patients to try and understand their brain scans, which are so central in the clinical decision-making process, but only very few patients actually know what you can see on the scan. So we think this is a, a very important factor. So along the care path, uh, there's multiple things where we can help. 
detecting changes in symptoms, detecting potential relapses, uh, and stimulating treatment adherence. Whenever there's a brain scan done for MS, we make sure that, first of all, the quality of the scan is up to standards, and secondly, that the conclusions made from the brain scan are quantitative, are objective, and are able to be trusted. And then, of course, these, as I mentioned before, trying to help improve the alignment between doctor and patient, um, making sure that the visit runs smoothly and that there's some time saving there, and that we, pr we um, present all the information together in one portal, and this can be a web portal, or this can be inside EMR. Uh, we've implemented it already, uh, this platform within an EMR in a couple uh, local systems in Europe, but we're now also launching our Epic and Cerner uh, integration, where doctors, clinicians, maybe even radiologists can see the app data, can see the brain scans, can see the overlays, the um, our IcoBrain data, together with our predictive models and our clinical decision support systems, which we're uh, working on. So we know that when you want to get these tools into the clinical practice, it's important to do a technical validation to show that it's clinically relevant and also to show that there's an economic model behind it. Um, and so we've shown in some studies that uh, radiologists are more consistent in their reporting when they use our software. We showed the second thing is a very important one, that there's a two and a half times faster detection of treatment failure in MS when using our IcoBrain software. And this is actually the basis for a very important uh, MedTech innovation briefing um, in, in the UK on our software, and which is also now the basis for our CP3 uh, code submission, which we're working on with the American Medical Association. And then there's also uh, some studies that we did on the economic impact of our tools showing that the potential outcome improvement by just using our um, IcoBrain software can be comparable to 70% of the impact of the first actual disease modifying treatment uh, in MS. So we're working with United Healthcare and NHS uh, on some pilots. So we've published a lot of studies as you can see on the left and on the right, uh, this is just a recent independent publication that showed that our software in MS is at, uh, by far the most validated tool out there. Um, yeah, while our tools were um, initially developed for uh, healthcare providers, initially radiologists, but now also uh, neurologists, nurses, going a lot more holistic, um, we believe that there's a lot of value as well for payers to help uh, save resources, to not spend money on treatments that are not working, um, but also for pharma partners, supporting them in their clinical trials is a big part of what we do. Um, and of course, the patients, um, we get a lot of, of um, how do you say it? We get a lot of um, satisfaction from working with the patients, from being in contact with them. When you look at our uh, patient app, everybody can just download it. Um, it's free. And you see, look at the ratings, you can see, look at the reviews, when you see that it's actually helping patients in their daily lives. That's, what we, that's why we get up in the morning, that's why we do it. Uh, we want to try and make the effect of these neurological diseases on the patient's lives as minimal as possible and make sure they have uh, the best care that they can. And that's it for me. Thank you.